Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. The first half of this video is going to be of the quick tip variety. We'll be mounting this 8 inch contact wheel onto a tooling arm. I ordered this wheel from AliExpress, so I think it came from Hong Kong. It took about three months to come in, so if you're not in a hurry, uh, you can order one of these from overseas and get a pretty good deal. I'll make sure to put the links to all the items I use in these builds in the description below. The first step is to drill a hole into your tooling arm. My belt grinder accepts inch and a half by inch and a half aluminum tooling arms. You can start off with just a chunk of bar and drill this hole, but in my case I actually had a tooling arm with some holes in it that I'm repurposing and that made my drilling process here easier. The wheel that I ordered has bearings that accept a 12.7 millimeter or a one half of an inch axle. So I will be tapping this hole to a quarter 20. I went with the quarter 20 because it has a nice fine thread. In reality, you could drill a hole all the way through your tooling arm and just run your bolt through, but I like the threading method because it seems to keep everything straighter and a little bit more secure. Now this step isn't necessary. You can accomplish the same thing with a large stack of washers, but I decided to make this bushing here so that I didn't have to use as many washers to space out the wheel from the tooling arm. Uh, you have to have a little bit of space in between your wheel and tooling arm, otherwise the rubber of the wheel would literally contact uh, the aluminum tooling arm. So I took this piece of three quarters of an inch bar and drilled it out to one half of an inch. What you see me do there is actually turn it over uh, so I don't contact my parallels. I'll take this moment here to talk a little bit about the hardware. If you go to the hardware store and buy a five inch long bolt, you will have a portion of that bolt that's not threaded. And unfortunately, you won't have enough threads to make it all the way through an inch and a half tooling arm. So I ordered this offline so that I can get it all the way through the tooling arm threads and also put a nut on the end. Now you could get around this if you uh, went on the inside of your tooling arm and knock those threads out. So there's no threads to contact the non-threaded portion of the bolt but I felt like this was a cleaner solution. So I'm pretty excited to have this wheel. I wanna do some messing around with hollow grinds, but I've been able to use it on one knife thus far uh, for some Coke bottle handle shaping, and it worked great for that. You can see I actually did this before I had the longer hardware, but this worked uh, great, and I'm excited to uh, get a little better with my handle shaping here. So that concludes the quick tip. We're gonna move on to the bonus footage here which is my slack belt attachment that didn't really turn out the way that I planned. So the major flaw in this entire slack belt assembly is the selection of materials. I selected a quarter inch piece of plate, whereas I really should have gone, you know, much higher than that, maybe up to a three eighths piece of plate to allow uh, less flex in the system. I'll show at the end where I set up a couple different orientations of this attachment uh, alongside my flat platen and we do some dial indicator tests to show the amount of flex that I had in this system. But that being said, the steps uh, that I take here will be the same if you are using a larger piece of material or a thicker piece of material. So if you're going to make one of these, just get a thicker piece. Uh, I went ahead and cut out a rough shape of this holder or I guess we'll call it an arm for the slack belt and then I drilled out my pivot point here. So I'll be drilling, I think that is a 3 8 by 16 or that's at least a 3 8 hole. And then I'm going to be drilling holes in an arc pattern, just like you would drill out holes and then file in a guard. I'll be drilling out holes and filing in this slot. Now many ask why I didn't do this with my milling machine. And the answer was I think I could have done it with the milling machine, but this milling machine is not very rigid and I think I can file it faster than I could mill it in this scenario. By the time I get everything set up and jigged up to mill an arc into this material, uh, just cutting through the slots with a file uh, would be faster. So I got the holes drilled, I went through them with a round file, and then I spent some time flattening out all of these ridges. Once I got them close enough for the Dremel, I cleaned them up, and this is the slot that I was left with. So this worked out pretty good. I was able to put it on my tooling arm later and, and move this around uh, via that slot pretty nicely. 
So the first thing I do is I'm actually drilling and tapping a quarter 20 hole on the top here. This is going to be my idler wheel on the top of the attachment. And then I did a little test fit just to show that with this handle and a tooling arm, uh, I have a good movement of this attachment. So this part, a lot of people are probably going to cringe at because I'm sure it's not the right way to do this. I know it's not the right way to do this, but I devised this punch here so that I can drive some bearings into a four inch contact wheel that I had. So I had this wheel lying around. I didn't have any bearings in it and I ordered some cheap bearings and I just used this punch to drive them in. So I stacked about four of them on top of each other to fill up the entire void space in the center of the wheel. Like I said, I know that's probably not the right way to do it, uh, but for this little test piece, I, I wanted to try it out. So I'm attaching these wheels the same way I attached the wheels on my large contact tooling arm. I'm threading them all the way through and then putting a lock nut on the back. So I have a four inch contact on the bottom and a two inch idler on the top. So as far as the function of this attachment, it works just fine. It works as a slack belt should. My major gripe with the system is that it's very uh, flexible. So this is my normal platen, and you can see how much flex I have with my normal flat platen. And I'm using that as a benchmark for the slack belt. So I have about 11 thousandths of an inch of movement at the bottom of my flat platen, at the bottom wheel of my flat platen. When I throw on the slack belt attachment, I have way more travel. Uh, we're talking about 33 thousandths of an inch of travel on the slack belt attachment, which I felt like was a lot. Even when I loosen the belt substantially, uh, I still have way more travel in this slack belt attachment uh, than I did in my flat platen, still around 30 thousandths. Just for fun, I drilled and tapped a quarter 20 hole for my large contact wheel to put on the bottom of this thing. And by raising that location, I was able to get the flex down to around 23 thousandths. So all in all, it will get the job done, but if you're gonna do this yourself, make sure you use a thicker piece of plate. You know, you can have uneven wear on your wheels and things of that nature with too much flex, and you could have tracking issues. So hey, if y'all like that little quick tip video, please hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.